We are finally at the biggest week of 2022 so far, that is. We have a lot of big weeks ahead of us for the rest of the year, but this is one of the biggest ones, and I really want you guys to think about what the fuck have you been through since November of 2021, December of 2021, January of 2022, February of 2022, and now March of 2022. Not only, well, last week we had Venus conjoin Saturn and then leave that besiegement. But this week we finally have Venus leaving Saturn ruled signs and we have the Mars Saturn conjunction. God, what else do we have this week? We have literally every single day as a highlight. It's like the Mars Saturn conjunction on Monday, Venus enters Pisces on Tuesday, Wednesday's got some moon stuff. Thursday, we have Mercury sextiling Saturn. Friday, we have Mercury sextiling Mars. Saturday, we have more moon stuff. And then Sunday, Mercury is going to be going into Taurus. So there's quite a bit that we have going on this week. But I think what makes this week so special is, I mean, after this week's done, pretty much, we're going to be having most planets be leaving the sign of Aquarius, where things have been pretty gnarly for quite some time. But I think the biggest thing is... um. And this is kind of more of the thing I want to talk about is this Mars-Saturn conjunction and this kind of revisit to the lockdowns that we had in 2020. But let's go ahead and just kind of start talking about this week anyway. Let's just jump straight into it. We're starting this week off, April 4th on Monday. The moon is going to be first making a square to uh, Mars and Saturn. Um, as it's doing that, it will sextile Jupiter and conjoin the North Node. But then it, before it moves into Gemini, it will square Venus as Mars can join Saturn as they square the North Node, South Node. That probably sounds like gibberish without a visual. So let me show you. So again, this is April 4th. This is Monday here. And let's just kind of dial in everything that's going on here. For one, the moon, we just got off this new moon in Aries, right? Like what? I mean, you can't really ask for a better, like today I'm recording this on Friday, April 1st. Uh, new moon in Aries on the first of the month. You really can't get a better timing than that. This is a great month to start new things. I really can't emphasize that enough because, I mean, Monday, we're making huge changes. This is a huge, you guys don't hear me say this a lot where I'm like, oh, there's a big shift in the energy or a big, you know, this is that. This is a really big shift. This is a really big pivot. This is really moving on from a lot and a really big change. And the moon's coming out from this new moon in Aries, right? It's now gaining light. It is going to first uh, conjoin the North Node, square this Mars, Saturn, and Taurus, right? And there's going to be this moon in Taurus on Monday of, you know, the moon is, again, what we feel, what's going to make us feel comfortable, what's going to make us feel nourished, and it's in Taurus. It's very fixated. Uh, it's focused on value. It's focused on nourishment and security. And the moon on the North Node is like really wanting that, like not afraid to put your money where your mouth is in order to get where you want. But the moon is squaring Mars and Saturn. Mars and Saturn in the superior position. And this is, so before, before Uranus and Neptune and Pluto were ever discovered, this was like the bad, the worst transit you can have is a Mars-Saturn conjunction. Um, of course, once you, you know, we under, you know, then we get Pluto into the picture and maybe Saturn-Pluto conjunctions are maybe a little bit worse, but this is bad. And I don't want to underemphasize that. You know, some people might think I'm a little bit too negative, but this is really appropriate for, uh, I don't want to say just negativity, but I think that it's really appropriate to kind of go over all of the ways this can really be challenging. Um, I was thinking about making a delineation episode about um, the last Mars-Saturn conjunction and what we've been through. And I want you guys to think about, you know, because for a lot of people, this is what's been really challenging as an astrologer is a lot of people had like COVID was a really good time for them and COVID was a really hard time for them. And right now, you know, cause I get a lot of comments of like, Cameron, lockdown was great for me. That's fine. But there are a lot of people that lost their jobs, killed themselves, overdosed, um, stopped feeding their family, stopped, you know, making phone calls to their family members based off that lockdown. I was personally affected with family members and people I knew because I, I lived in Vegas for a long time and all of my buddies, all my friends work in the service industry. Everyone lost their jobs. And that's really, I, I'm bringing this up because in March of 2020, Saturn ingressed into Aquarius and then Mars ingressed into Aquarius and they both conjoined at zero degrees Aquarius. And there was this kind of new beginning of this new Aquarius energy that we were gonna be getting familiar with for clearly the next 200 years. But now that we have Mars and Saturn conjoining again, it's different this time. Um, I 
earlier this year, I was kind of like, oh, maybe there'll be lockdowns again. And right now there's lockdowns going on in China, which is going to affect the, the global market and will probably raise inflation and oil and stuff like that. But I look at this is as, um, I love the word social distancing for the Mars, Saturn, and Aquarius. Mars separates and Saturn is like, you know, communities and groups and it's an Aquarius where it's also about communities and groups and literally separating yourself from society, socially distancing yourself from people, very Mars, Saturn, and Aquarius. Now it's different when it's at zero degrees Aquarius versus the, the third decan, but this Mars Saturn conjunction. So like the moon, so we're going to come back to the moon here in a second, but this Mars Saturn conjunction is also squaring the nodes, which I made that as part of the highlight. I mean, I'm probably going to be riffing off about Monday here for like 20 minutes because there's a lot to talk about. But as Mars can join Saturn, there's either a lockdown or a separation. And I want you to think about lockdown for a second. What are you fully committed to that you have no other way out of? That's Mars Saturn, right? Mars could, you have to think Mars and Saturn and Aquarius is very rogue energy things. Uh, going off the beaten path, uh, an AWOL soldier. That's what I think of of Mars and Aquarius, right? Rogue shooter. And as Mars can join Saturn, there's facing a barrier, there's facing a limit, there's facing an authority. There's facing a, a structure that is immovable. You are either forced to be locked down in a certain area, or you are going to be separating and outcasting yourself from a certain area. Um, these are both of the hardest planets, the ho most hardcore planets together, conjoining each other. And not only are they conjoining each other, they are squaring the nodes, which most of you should probably know by now, like astrologers love talking about how I mean, you can do a whole reading just off the nodes. The nodes are incredibly, incredibly powerful. And you have this Mars-Saturn conjunction happening, right? Which is indicated, uh, uh, indicative of either a big separation from something or a big commitment lockdown to something. Like you are fucking forced to do this and uh, or you're on the other side. Like there's this kind of like, oh, you're separated from us. Get on with your life. Or you are like, you know, locked into this new arena. This is squaring the nodes though. And the nodes, the north node is this hyper intensive pull and this compelling urge to go towards a certain direction for better or for worse. That's in Taurus, right? That value, security, safety. We just want things to go back to normal. Um, and the south nodes in Scorpio, we have sacrifices that we're willing to make in order to do that. The south node is what we have to release. The south node is what we have to purge. South node is the prerequisite to the North node. It's Scorpio, right? Our resentments, our anger, our pain, our distrust, uh, our hidden feelings. There's something about that that is exhaustive, that is draining, and that we're slowly purging out to go towards this North node area. And that starts with this Mars. I mean, it doesn't really start, but this Mars-Saturn conjunction being in the middle of these nodes is making that shift of, okay, now that we're leaving the South node stuff, right? We've been having, think of December of 2021. Um, I know that was a long time ago, but we still had the South Node in Sagittarius. Then the South Node moved into Scorpio in January. So we're still getting rid of all that South Node stuff. And we're moving towards this North Node stuff, getting rid of the drain, going towards, you know, what we want to. And I really look at this Mars-Saturn conjunction as, I mean, for one, I think there could easily be a lockdown. Um, I think this, I mean, this is going to be the Ukraine thing too, by the way, like this isn't looking good for Ukraine. Um, but I look at this as a full stop of something um, and a big pivot towards something. In your own personal life, I want you to think about where Aquarius rules in your chart and what, um, you know, things have been introduced in this area of your life since the beginning of 2020. Think of March, April, and May of 2020. What was introduced to you during that time? What were you going through that time? Because there's a lot of revisits to that at this, but this time, it's not so introductory versus it's much more, you've been doing this for a while. You've been here before. You know, your first time doing something really hard is probably really hard, but then the second time you have a little bit more experience, so it's not that bad. That's what this is, right? And I wanted to throw the analogy of like lockdowns because for example, if they do another lockdown again, which a lot of people are like, no, they won't. They did it once. They can totally do it again. Um, you fucking watch. But if they did do another lockdown again, a lot of us are much more prepared for the next one. Um, we all have our Netflix and we all have our, you know, we all work from home already. And that also kind of coincides with this because Venus is about to enter Pisces. So, and, and we'll talk about that. But I just think when it comes to Monday, 
and this moon is on top of the North Node, and it's sextiling Jupiter, and it's squaring Mars and Saturn. There is this urge to go towards something that you want for value, for security. That's going to make you feel nourished, but there's something getting in the way. There are commitments. There are you are you are locked out of the thing that you want to get, no matter how hard you're trying to get it. Um, you know that's that moon on the North Node. This is kind of like I'm going to take what's mine, no matter what. And it's squaring Mars and Saturn, right? You're probably like if you. It's kind of well. It's um, you know, I hate. I didn't want to comment on this, uh, but it's like the whole Will Smith thing. You you know, you would think, you know, if any other guy like I, I as a I, I've been a host of the event. I used to DJ weddings, and I've been assaulted before, and so I just think of you know how there should have been security there to escort him out, um, because usually there's repercussions to towards your actions, but that didn't really happen at that point. But this looks like repercussions of your actions, immediate repercussions of your actions. Very like, you know, push the big red button and all of a sudden things end. But I mean, the moon sex telling Jupiter at the same time too, there is this like, let's look at the bigger picture. Let's, you know, hope for more. But Monday is really cutthroat. This is not a joke. Like this is not, and this isn't necessarily bad. You know, I don't like saying bad or good, but I look at this as, this is not a joke. This is not going to be like a fun and games type Monday. This is not going to be light. And this isn't necessarily going to be a day where you're going to, you know, I, I think if you're walking into Monday, hoping that things will be light and easy, I think you're going to be really disappointed. But if you're going into Monday, like, I want you to really think about this. If there's a, well, well let's actually, you know, this is what I really want to get to. And this is kind of what I want to talk about in, in, in a podcast, because I want to do a revisit to this is let's say things go into lockdown again. Let's say things don't turn out that well in this Ukraine situation. What are you going to do? Let's say oil gets more expensive. Let's say the job situation changes. Let's say inflation keeps going up. What are we going to do? You know, that Mars-Saturn conjunction, those lockdowns, I know, again, a lot of people had a really good time, and I'm so happy for you, but a lot of people were really forced to reckon with what was wrong with their lives, what they didn't like, what wasn't serving them what their true purpose was. A lot of relationships ended because they simply had nothing to connect on and, the, and, and that lockdown made them realize that. So when you're in this type of situation, right? We have uh, Mars, Saturn, and Aquarius. You are going to be forced to reckon with what is real for you. Think of the Aquarius stuff. Let's say it's the 1500s. Let's say it's a couple thousand years ago and we're all, you know, um, what are those? Uh, I'm thinking of caveman, the... Uh, the uh, the, uh, I can't think of the word. We're all caveman villages, villagers, and, and we're all in a tribe. Let's say you get outcasted of your tribe and you're on the outside. What do you do in those situations? What do you reckon with? What are you forced to understand? And I look at this Mars Saturn as there is going to be like, for example, if you're in an unhappy relationship, but the circumstances of the world make it to where it's easy to ignore, this will be unignorable. This is so loud the moon on the north node squaring Mars and Saturn or Mars and Saturn squaring. This is so loud. This is unignorable. And so I just really want you to think about Monday in terms of like if shit gets really real, where do you stand on a lot of this stuff? And are you willing? And, and I mean, I'm just talking about in your own personal life, not even on the outside world stuff because I know the world's crazy and the world's going to continue to be crazy. But in your own personal life, like are you one little thing away from a reckoning? And I kind of look at this as like, this is going to challenge you. And this is going to really call in all of your strength, all of your wisdom. And I look at this Mars Saturn squaring the nodes is what shift are you making in order to go towards the direction you want to? Like that Mars Saturn conjunction we had in Aquarius was very like, oh, you're locked out or you're locked in. What are you going to do? Figure it out. Versus we've been here before, right? Mars has been building up to this conjunction with Saturn for quite some time. We've all seen this coming. It's much more about accepting it and dealing with it head on, right? There's people that, I know a lot of people that have to face a big thing in their life, but do not have the balls to face it for what it is. And I really ask you to like face the music on Monday, really face it, really fucking embrace it. Like don't ignore it. Don't walk away from it. I think it's impossible to walk away from it, but I think it's really easy in the spiritual world and the astrology world to literally just you know, a, a lot of people spiritualize and astrologize these life things so like, oh, you know, rather than growing up and maturing and learning lessons, a lot of you guys just blame, 
you know, the planets for it, which don't get me wrong. That's why we use astrology. It's very, it's, it's, it's nice for that, for the validation, but like, there's a lot of growing up that has to happen. And this Mars Saturn conjunction is not for the weak hearted. It is not for, you know, the squeamish. This is for, you know, and I, and, and, and look at what Aquarius rules in your chart, guys. This is real. This is serious. This is breakthrough energy. And this is a pivot though. Cause okay. The last Mars Saturn conjunction wasn't squaring the nodes. So in fact, it was like completely separate from the nodes. So the last Mars conjunction, in my opinion, was very like, oh, lockdown. We're just going to be dealing with this for a little while versus this is squaring the nodes. This is a huge pivot towards a higher ideal, towards a, a certain uh, a goal that we want to attain. But it takes a certain level of commitment. It takes a certain level of detachment. That Mars Saturn thing is like, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do. And there's really no other way around it. Like if that moon uh, on top of the North Node in Taurus, if that's what you want and you've got someone in your way, you're going to push that person out of your way to get what you want. And I just, you know, I just think Monday's a really good day to take things really seriously and to not, because the unavoidable, the unavoidable will be so loud that it's going to be, it, it, it's Mars Saturn, right? Like if it's, and we all want to avoid our life's problems. We all want to avoid the things that we have to do. This is unavoidable. Just do the thing. We've been we've been dealing with Venus and Mars and, and Saturn world signs for months now. This is not anything new, right? This is just a full culmination. And this is good news because the next day, the next day on Tuesday, the moon's gonna go into Gemini, but then Venus goes into Pisces. And I mean, I it literally is almost stoking tears in my eyes talking about Venus ingressing into Pisces. Really, I mean, that's like, you have to think. Let's go back to November of 2021 when we first had the eclipses in Scorpio and Taurus. We had a prenumeral eclipse. The nodes weren't in Taurus and Scorpio yet, but there was an eclipse there and Venus had entered shadow. Venus had already entered Capricorn like at the beginning of November. Venus has been in a Saturn ruled sign where Saturn's about restrictions and, and sobriety and not fun and rules and Venus is all about fun and games and sure she had a little bit of fun for a second in Capricorn but she's been there for five fucking months and then she can join then she was besieged by Mars and Saturn and then she was still in a Saturn world sign there that that's rough really rough I want you guys to look at it from the, from this perspective both of the bad planets are in one sign and once Venus enters Pisces on Tuesday both of the good planets are in one sign. Venus and Jupiter and Pisces and Mars and Saturn and Aquarius. They're going to be in aversion to each other, which means they can't see each other, which means it's kind of like the boogeyman in your closet doesn't exist if you close the door, right? If the door's a little bit cracked, you're like, the boogeyman's in there, but close the door. You can't see what you do. You don't know what you can't see, right? As Venus enters Pisces, there is this... Um. Again, have you ever gone through, a, I think I talked about this last week, but it's like when you go through a traumatic situation that requires all of like your strength to be in it. And then it's like the second it's over, you can fully relax and kind of dissolve. Like, um, I remember when my dad died, it was like, I didn't even have the time to grieve because there was so much shit we had to do. We had to take care of this motherfucker's house and all of his stuff and his stupid ex-wife. And it was just like, and then by the time it was all over, I didn't even realize it. It was like once it was all over and I got I, like my body just like gave up. And I really look at this Venus and Pisces. For, for example, if we go into a lockdown again, a lot of you are going to be fucking stoked. And a lot of you are going to be like, great, fuck society, which is very Mars and Saturn and Aquarius, right? Fuck society, fuck people. But as Venus goes into Pisces, there's truly this like, I mean, you have to think Venus is all about fun. And she's been in a Saturn ruled sign forever. The sign of judgment, the sign of authorities. And she's going to be in Jupiter's sign, which is, she's free from uh, judgment. She's free from, you know, expectations. She's just allowed to have fun. She's just allowed to enjoy herself and embrace what is fun for Venus. And I think, you know, you have to talk about Pisces. There's, there's a lot of this hypersensitivity in this, you know, it's kind of all over the place. But as Venus goes in there on Tuesday, I think there's this welcoming, like, wow, that was really hard. And now we have to relax a little bit. Venus and Pisces is looking a little bit more for empathy, for understanding. But I think as Venus goes into Pisces, this is just, I mean, again, it's like once you get out of the, once you close the door, it's, it's, it's the same thing of, or, or like your car. Have you ever had a bad day at work? And then it's like the second you get in your car, you just fucking lose it. 
that's like this, but this is like a good losing it. This is like a, you never realize how much weight you're carrying until like you let it go, right? And this isn't necessarily a, a letting go, but I do think as Venus goes into Pisces, there is this, wow, we can relax for a second. Wow, this isn't as tense as it used to be. Wow, I can really focus on what I want to do. Yes, Mars and Saturn are still in Aquarius. Yes, we're still like, it's either lockdown or you're separate and you're still committed to this work. But the fun is there. And I think that's the most important thing to understand about Venus because Venus is about fun and value and like literal enjoyment. It's been really kind of hard to enjoy things. And I said this back in November, the hard times are like the hard transits and the hard times, the winter is the time to do the hard things. Venus has been doing hard ass shit for a couple months. And now it's finally like, we get to like, fun gets to be fun. Fun isn't just like hardcore things. Like fun is fun. And so- as we go into Tuesday, Venus is going to, again, enter Pisces. There's this relaxation. There's this dissolving of, like, things that matter. And, yes, Mars and Saturn are, are in Aquarius. But the last time Mars and Saturn were in Aquarius, this was also, too, when Venus was uh, – I don't believe she was in Pisces at this time. Um, I believe Venus was in Aries – or, no, Venus was in Taurus. And this was when, like, the lockdowns happened and, like, everyone was like, nature is healing and everything's coming alive. Um, hold on. My lighting is, like, super messed up. There we go. Um. So that's all coming back again. And I think as Venus goes into Pisces, there is this kind of like nature is healing. Things are becoming better, albeit that we're on some type of a lockdown thing. Or, and again, I'm not saying that, again, I'm just saying if there was another lockdown, I wouldn't be surprised about saying, oh, there's going to be a lockdown and this is how it's going to be. But I think in our own personal lives, Mars and Saturn, like for example, it's in my third house and I'm going to be writing a lot. I'm going to be doing a lot of writing. I have a lot of car issues I got to work on. I got like sibling issues all types of third house stuff. And I'm going to be very committed and busy with that. But Venus is going to be my fourth house. And I've got my painting clothes on today. We're actually painting the kitchen. And I just painted these walls. So I don't know if you, you probably can't even notice. But anyway, Venus enters Pisces and the moon enters Gemini. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, really, the moon's just going to enter Gemini. Moon, emotions, how we feel. It's in Gemini. It's very communicative, very talkative. And not a lot's going on on Tuesday. I think a lot of Tuesday is like, Mars and Saturn can join Monday night, by the way. So as we wake up into Tuesday, we're kind of waking up into a new world. And I think Tuesday is just about processing it. Nothing like, like moon transits, again, connect the dots with everything. This is much more of like a, you know, just enjoying the moment for what it is. It's kind of like when you go on vacation, like some people, it's like, you know, they want to have an itinerary and go here and there. But sometimes it's just like, you know what? Just get to the place and just fucking relax for a minute. Like go hang out by the pool and then figure out your plans. That's a lot of Tuesday. It's like if lockdown happens, right? If lockdown happens, just fucking hang out. Hang out for a second and then figure out what's going to happen. Anyway, so Tuesday, Venus goes into Pisces. And I can't, I, I feel like I'm understating how wonderful that's going to feel. Um, <laughs> It's the best of times. It's the worst of times right now with the uh with the Aquarius stuff. But that Venus and Pisces, I truly, truly, a lot of you who have had Venus as your time lord, and she's been retrograde on top of Pluto, she's had Mars on top of her, she had Saturn, like literally Venus has had all of the worst transits you can literally think of. As she goes to her exalted sign, which people could even argue is better than domicile, and the fact that her exalted sign is Pisces and the ruler of Pisces is also in Pisces in its home sign really the gear shift on Tuesday. I cannot over, I, I would put so much money on it. We get to Wednesday. The moon is going to be then sextiling Mercury while the moon's in Gemini sextiling Mercury and Aries. The moon's going to try and Saturn and Mars, and then it's going to square Jupiter and Neptune. So the lunar transits are when we start connecting all the dots. So Tuesday's kind of like feeling like the, oh, this feels really good. We're in somewhere new. Then Wednesday's kind of like, all right, you know, day two of vacation. What's, what's the plan? What is the itinerary? <clears throat> excuse me. So on Wednesday, pretty much the whole day, the moon is going to be building up to these aspects and it's not going to be until later in the evening. But this moon is going to be sextiling Mercury. We love that, right? Moon and Gemini, Mercury and Aries. So much clarity. We just had this Mercury Kazemi. Yes, Mercury is combust. And uh, for those that don't know what combustion is, it's when a planet is within 10 degrees of the sun. The sun burns things up. And so like a planet being combusted is kind of like it's it's on fire. It's not really, you know, it's kind of like um when you uh pull out like a like bread. I think oh I, I don't bake. So like isn't it like with bread, you have to like let it sit for a second. Otherwise, if you poke a hole in it, like it just deflates. 
that's kind of like a planet being combust. It's like, okay, it's ready. It just had that Kazemi, but we got to let it cool off for a second. Otherwise, it's not really fully prepared. But Mercury's out of the oven and it's cooling off and the moon sextiling Mercury is like, you know, when you pull out, I mean, when you bake bread, I, again, I've never baked bread, so I'm just kind of making shit up here. But I would assume, you know, with an oven window, you can't really see what's going on in the oven all that well. And you're not really going to know what's going on until you pull that shit out of the oven. And this is kind of like examining it like, oh, this looks good. That looks good. Um, there's a lot of mental clarity here. The moon is also going to be trining Saturn and Mars, having the conversations that we need to have. Well, this is the Mars Saturn Aquarius. So a lot of the, the cancel culture stuff and the whole split society stuff, um, that's going to come up probably, but that's something that we'll be talking about for like the rest of the year as we've seen. But, um, what's really interesting to me is on Wednesday, the moon will try and Mars and Saturn. So there's a lot of like constructive energy, like plans being made, but the moon will be squaring Jupiter and Neptune after it trines Mars and Saturn, which is very like, like, if you lived in LA during the lockdowns and the lockdown happened and you were like, let's go to the beach. And then they were like, "Uh Oh, beach is closed. And so like, that's kind of like this of like, Oh, well, if this is the case, then I'll figure out something else. But then the moon squaring Jupiter Neptune is like, well, you know, the ideal, the thing that you were visioning isn't really lining up. Jupiter is getting really close to Neptune at this time, but I believe the moon in Gemini squaring Jupiter and Pisces is like, you know, if you ask too many, the less you know, the better is probably the way to look at Wednesday. The less you know, the better. But this is also like, you know, moon and Gemini, trining Saturn, trining Mars, getting the things done that you need to get done. It's squaring Jupiter, Neptune. It's not, you might've had a, a picture of it in your head. You might've had these larger than life grand expectations. And it's just not that way, right? Not that it's horrible, but this is a great day to lower your expectations, kind of get your like head in the game. Because I think as the moon squares Jupiter, this is, you know, weird conversation, weird talks, questions coming up and things being kind of confusing. Although like moon, I mean, Mercury is also sextiling Saturn and Mars. A lot of healthy and direct conversation, but it's like maybe you and someone else are on the same page, or at least you think, and then you have the conversation and then realize you're not on the same page. That's kind of like what Wednesday is like. And that's pretty much Wednesday. We get into Thursday though. And on Thursday, that is when Mercury is going to be sextiling Saturn. Um, this is a two uh, a two part event: Mercury sextiling Saturn, and then Mercury sextiling Mars, which will be really big. But then, after Mercury sextiles Saturn or during it, the Moon will then ingress into Cancer and trine Venus, which that is like the transit this week. We get into Thursday, and. Let's just talk about Mercury sextiling Saturn real quick because I actually really like this transit. <clears throat> Excuse me again. But Mercury, again, our thoughts, our ideas, our rationale, how we communicate, how we speak, it's an Aries. It's very blunt, very direct, very cutthroat. It's also an Aries. It's also like combust, right? So it's just like say words and think later. Do first, act later. Or I mean, uh, do first, think later. Mercury sextiling Saturn is... I feel like a, a good saying for that is like, I like the cut of your jib. That's very like Mercury and Aries, sextiling Saturn and Aquarius. There's a, the way that you're communicating is reinforcing ideas. The way that you're communicating, expressing is, is literally reinforcing um, whether that's, I mean, gosh, again, it really just depends on what Aquarius and Aries rule in your chart. But I would assume Mercury, sextiling uh, Saturn is a great opportunity to communicate what you want to say and have it be heard, have it be received. Um saying what you need to say as far as groups of people go. Um, sex telling, I mean, Mercury too, being about like our ideas, our rationale, it's an Aries, it's it's combust. There's like, it's kind of like, I think of like hot molten, like um, like molding steel, I think is a good way to look at it. Mercury and Aries, sex telling Saturn and Aquarius is, you know, you only have so much time to, for, like when steel is molten, you only have so much time to form, form it, uh, get it into a form, get it into a shape. And this is like, you know, you've poured the steel and now it's starting to take shape with Mercury sextiling Saturn, right? The idea in your head <clears throat> is slowly materializing. Maybe it's just in the cast right now and it's not necessarily material yet, but you are starting to see the outline of it. Now, also on uh, Thursday, that is when we're going to be having the moon, again, ingress into Cancer and trine Venus. 
let's kind of go over a few things here. Cause I actually talk about this. Well, we'll talk about this on Thursday, but as that moon goes into cancer, I mean, it's home sign where it can feel receptive to sensitivity. It can feel safe. It can feel trusting. And it's going to try and Venus and Pisces is this is like, this is a very safe place. I really, really like this. Um, you guys know me. I know you guys know I talk shit about the water transits most of the time. This is really wet, like really wet, like juicy fruit wet. Um, and it's really safe. It's really replenishing. Um, it's like one of those things where, you know, um, like it's, it's when you're so ratcheted up with like stress or whatever, and then you finally like get to like relax a little bit and you're like, whoa, I didn't realize how tense I was. That's what a lot of this is. And as that moon shines Venus, this is receiving, this is connecting, this is enjoying, this is pleasing yourself. And it seems very safe. It seems very nice. It seems very like connected and sweet. And I just think it's this moon's in Cancer, trining Venus and Pisces. It's really like, what is of necessity? What matters? And as it's trining Venus and Pisces, it's being able to connect to what is going to make you feel good. Like, you know, rising tides lift all boats. And uh, Or another uh, analogy I like to think of is um, you can't really pour from an empty cup. And I think um, a lot of this is filling up your cup is a good way to look at it. So then we get into Friday. And Friday is really one of the ones I wanted to talk about. Because look at what's going on on Friday. Mercury's going to sextile Mars. We like that. Moon's going to sextile Uranus, whatever. But Jupiter and Neptune actually hit 23 degrees exactly. So they're not exactly conjoining each other, but they're at the same degree by Friday. And the sun is at its exalted degree while the moon's in its home sign, while Saturn's in its home sign, while Venus is in its exalted sign. So there's a lot of good things going on on Friday. We get into it, and first things first, I mean, yeah, the moon and Cancer sex telling Uranus and Taurus, whatever. Um, boy, this light is coming in here. I haven't bought in blinds yet for the studio, so please bear with me when it comes to this lighting. My next, I have so many projects to do for this. Let me actually get myself clear here. Um, Uh-oh. Sorry, I ran into some technical difficulties there. Anyway. Um, we get into, yeah, this is Friday. Moon's going to sextile Uranus, whatever. I think the biggest thing is Jupiter's on top of Neptune. The, I mean, look, let me just tell you the bad stuff right off the bat, because a lot of astrologers probably won't be saying this. I'm telling you right now, this is why I did an episode on the Ukraine Russia thing. There's a lot of things right now that are really, really good and very visionary. And if you have a vision in your life and you're looking to create it, this is a great time for ideals. This is a great time for hope. This is a great time for looking at the bigger picture. But Neptune rules deception. Just Ju Jupiter Neptune is propaganda. And so many people think they're not being propagandized. And they are. And I just look at this as there will be so much. Well, this is the thing I was like, Tim Dillon made a joke about this. It's like, why every five minutes on the news, it's like, oh my God, Ukraine is beating Russia and Russia slowly moving out of Ukraine. But then five seconds later, it's like Russia bombs the shit out of a city and annihilates it off the map. And it's like, I didn't even like, are, we, are they winning? Are they losing? I don't know. I look at this Jupiter Neptune thing as it is, there's going to be a lot for the next month, by the way, all of April, Jupiter is on top of Neptune. There is a lot that is going to be like really larger than life. And it's going to be kind of one of those things of just, just take it with a grain of sand for just a moment, just a moment, because it's going to be really easy to, uh, you know, it's it's like a, it's it's just um it's very over. I don't know how else to explain it, but overwhelming, very larger than life, very like you know sold. It's it's a specific narrative that's manipulated and twisted, and you know that's going to be a big thing. Now that is happening, right? So like when you like for example, if there's a larger than life story and it sounds so crazy, like you just gotta not believe it, like. A lot of propaganda out there right now. But the other thing for the for your own personal life, I think this is what's important is having your vision, right? There's a vision. There's an ideal. There's a certain thing that you're wanting to create. Now, will you be able to hit that exact ideal? Maybe, but also maybe not. But I think what's important is with Pisces, with Jupiter in general, it takes hope and it takes faith and it takes these, these visions and these dreams in order to motivate you to go to your next 
to, to go to your next spot, right? And I really ask, like, with Jupiter conjoining Neptune is, like, real. I mean, get into the woo-woo spiritual shit. Like, what do you believe? What do you have faith in? Where are you storing your faith? Where are you storing your trust? And it's on top of Neptune. This is like an end-all, be-all type thing. Either you're just going to kind of be blasted by everything that's going on in the outside world, or you're going to be like Jesus moment and kind of like step away from all of the outside circumstances and really go within. So this is really spiritual, but this is very overwhelming at the very least. Sun is at its exalted degree. There is this like charged up energy of ourselves, of how we're feeling. Um, I just think we're feeling good. I want, And I also during this time, I want you to reflect of what Friday, April 8th feels like versus what you might've felt like the first couple weeks of January. There's a really stark difference with how we feel about things. But anyway, Jupiter's on top of Neptune. Uh, oh yeah, Mercury's gonna sextile Mars. That was the thing I wanna talk about. Mercury's in Mars' sign. So Mercury, about ideas and our thoughts and our rationale, is in Mars' house and is working with Mars' tools, right? So Mars' tools are like knives and fire. But Mars is in Aquarius where, you know, it's kind of like the leftover tools or the, you know, the, the secondhand store tools is a good way to look at it. And so Mercury sex telling Mars is being able to configure and DIY a certain solution to a problem, right? This is Aquarius and Aries is very DIY, by the way. Um, and especially with Pisces, like something I like about DIY is very like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be, you know, finished and done. You, you can make it look nice, but it doesn't have to be like the nicest material, the nicest this. Oftentimes with DIY, it has a story or a narrative behind it. So I look at this as very DIY energy. Mercury sex telling Mars is being able to put the pieces together, put the action plans in step, but it's Mars and Aquarius, Mercury and Aries. It's it's kind of going on the outside. It's kind of looking from a different perspective. It's using tools that maybe aren't that you aren't necessarily super familiar with. <laughs> But as Mercury sex tells Mars, I think there's a lot of clarity with our communication. I think there's a lot of certainty with how we're feeling and what actions that we're taking. Mars is no longer on top of Saturn. There's no longer this restriction. Once Mars leaves Saturn, this is kind of like, you know, um, Mars conjoining and building up to Saturn is like this building up of pressure and this building up of constriction versus once Mars leaves Saturn, there's going to be kind of less of that, especially once Mars goes into Pisces, of course. But, you know, Friday just seems like a lot of certainty. Like I think Thursday as that moon goes into Cancer and trines Venus, it's like, ugh, like sometimes you just need a fucking bath or like a nice warm shower. And then it's like, once you have the warm shower after like a hard day, then things will make a lot more sense. That's what this is looking like. Then we get into Saturday and the moon is going to then, as it's in Cancer, make that trine to Jupiter and Neptune. The moon's gonna then square Mercury and then it's gonna go into Leo. So Saturday is a little interesting. Um, not the biggest stuff, but I think as the moon's in Cancer, trining Jupiter and Neptune, like this is really receiving what you need. Like Cancer is the feelings, the protection, the safety, and it's trining Jupiter and Neptune. You're going to be really receiving what you need here. Um, there's a lot of Venus Jupiter stuff in Pisces, like a, a, a saying that I like a lot and that I kind of, I, I or at least I try to live my life by is givers gain. Meaning like, well, like people think that like, oh, if I just give conditionally, like people straight up are conditional givers. Like they like, it's funny, spiritual people will even do this. They're like, if I do something good here, I will get good karma later. That's not how it works, you fucking morons. Like you're, you're, you're supposed to give unconditionally because the universe gives to you, right? That's a lot of this Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune. Like, like stop, like it's the same thing with like, uh, with like a homeless person. Like if you're going to give a homeless person money, yeah, they're probably going to spend it on, on drugs or booze or whatever, but that's not necessarily the, the point. Like, yeah, that's their decision. And yes, that's a, another set of issues. But the thing is, is like, you have to be giving from your heart. And then I look at this moon and cancer trying this Jupiter Neptune stuff after Venus is like, we're going to soften our hearts a little bit. We're going to kind of ease up. And this is a lot of giving and a lot of receiving at this time. And I think that's very new. Well, we have to think we've had everything in these Aquarius and these Capricorn signs and we've had Mars and everything's been so rough and everything goes from so rough to like the exact opposite spectrum to just like overwhelmingly saturated with emotions and like, you know, nourishment and fun. And so I think it's going to feel like really like, um, again, it's kind of like, have you ever seen those videos of like dogs that were like abandoned in like the streets and then like they try to get picked up and they're like really vicious and then like a couple weeks later, they're with the new owner and they're like crying because like, you know, they're like, 
they love their new home. That's like this, that you're going from like abandoned puppy to like shelter puppy or like found a new home puppy. And it's really like, it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel weird, but it's going to feel good. Um, but it's going to be overwhelming. I think at the same time, it's also like Jupiter and Neptune. Imagine being like an abandoned street dog and then getting like a loving family, like Jupiter and Neptune's like, Oh my God, these people are the best. So, and the other thing on Saturday is, you know, the moon is going to be squaring Mercury once we get later on into the day. So again, it's just kind of like same thing with like puppy, like fresh, excited puppy energy. Maybe the puppy's going to piss and shit, you know, in a few places and you're, you know, not everything's perfect. And I think that moon and cancer squaring Mercury and Aries is that Mercury and Aries like sharpness with your tongue might kind of, you know, it's like a dog when you get like, when you got to yell at a dog and they fucking just make the stupid puppy eyes, like it's the end of the world. Moon and cancer, maybe you get a little bit too excited and it squares Mercury and Aries and you kind of, you know, you get a little too excited and you piss on the carpet and you got to rub your nose in it. That's kind of like this, but it's not the end of the world. I think the moon and cancer squaring Mercury and Aries is just, it's just the, 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 um, the intensity of the conversation or the, the feelings around it just make it a little bit more sensitive. So just kind of prepare for, you know, when, when emotions are, uh, are around and there's all these things kind of going like emotions are heightened and that's both, that can both be good and bad depending on the situation. Right. So anyway, that's Saturday. And then the moon ingress, I mean, it'll go opposite Pluto. Mercury squares Pluto on Sunday, but then the moon will go into Leo, where I think after this moon, I mean, the moon's going to leave all of this cancer watery stuff. And then as it goes into Leo, it's only making its way towards a trine with like the sun. It won't trine Mercury. It'll trine the sun, but it'll start to make its way towards opposite Mars and Saturn. It has quite a bit of time before it actually conjoins Mars and Saturn, but as it goes into Leo, it's building up towards going opposite Mars and Saturn. Mars and Saturn in Aquarius, the sign of other people and groups of people. And the moon is in Leo, the sign of the individual. And I think as the moon's in Leo, I talk a lot about this, is like your emotions, your 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 feelings are really tied to your pride, your identity, and, and, and how you're seen and visibility. And I think as the moon goes into Leo, there is this like really taking in a lot of pride, really feeling your, like your heart. And that's, I mean, the sun's also in Aries right now. So like the fire energy is really ramping up at this point. But I think as it goes into Leo, there's this sense of like, well, again, it's like after, you know, you, like a good, there's nothing better than a fucking good, like if you've been holding back emotion for a long time and then you get it out after you decompress, you truly feel lighter and better than ever. Like after a good, like even a depression nap, you feel better afterwards. Like you're like, I don't feel as bad anymore. That's like this moon in Leo going into Saturday night, going into Sunday. It's like all of a sudden, like y- you feel much more livelier, much more connected to your heart, much more passionate, not so like sappy and emotional. But then we go into Sunday and Sunday is when Mercury will square Pluto before it actually goes into Taurus. So um, what am I doing here? There we go. Mercury square Pluto. I think we're just going to be hearing more about the Fed and the interest rates and, and things like that. Um, to be honest with you. Um, could be about some of the war stuff, but that's a little bit looking into the weeds, in my opinion. I think as Mercury squares Pluto, though, this is kind of like maybe addressing some fear. Like Mercury and Aries, it's like you have to say what you have to say, but maybe you're still a little bit scared to say it, but you're just going to do it anyway. So just kind of like, it's like swallowing like a big, taking a big gulp before you like go to say what's on your what's on your chest, essentially. But then, Later on on Sunday, Mercury goes into Taurus and um, the Mercury and Taurus transit's really interesting, but you know, Mercury, uh, communication, mind, uh, our thoughts, our intellect, it's in Taurus. We're talking about value, security, stability. I think all this Aries ramping up of charging and initiating beginning, we get into the Taurus stuff of cementing, bringing things together, finding stability. And it looks great by the time we get into Mercury and Taurus. Um... That's pretty much this week, guys. Let's go into this next week. Next week has so much stuff going on. I mean, this week has a lot going on, but next week, Mars ingresses into Pisces. It's going to be better than it's more than it's going to be bad, if that makes sense. Yes, Mars will be with Venus and Jupiter, but once Mars is out of the Saturn ruled signs, like it's going to feel pretty good. I think we'll enjoy Mars and Pisces at, at least. Jupiter conjoins Neptune the next week. 
Next week is also when my course launches. I will be having, by next week's horoscope, I will be having a um, pre-order link so you guys can make sure you get the notification when it drops. Jupiter conjoins Neptune next week. Then we have the full moon in Libra where it's uh, the individual versus the relationship, you versus someone else. How do we bring the balance and harmony into things? Then we have Mercury conjoining Uranus, which is very like, you know, breakthrough mental moment. And at that same time, it's like Venus, sextile Uranus and Mercury. So next week's a lot of fun. And what I kind of want to end on as far as like final thoughts go is, because I also have to get going before the sun hits like right here and my lighting's all messed up. Um, I said this last week, maybe the week before that of, we just had a lot of hardcore transits for a long time. And uh, over the course of this week, we are shifting into a completely different future. April and May are the craziest months this year. And they really bring in, I mean, this new moon in Aries we just had just really laid the groundwork for like the next two months. And everything's gonna be moving really fast from here on out in a good direction. But I would just look at it as, I just want you to be aware of the shift because a lot of people are like, God, you know, if you've been watching me for a while, I told you guys last summer, last fall, I was like, enjoy this while it lasts. It's gonna be a shitty winter. And it was a shitty winter. A lot of people, a lot of you guys said, said that. In that same regard, I want you to realize we just got done with the shitty winter. We still got more shitty things to go through, but this is where you're going to have a lot of good things kind of come in really quickly. And you should really enjoy this. Like, th like when, 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 for example, it like buy low, buy when the stock is low, buy like, you know, it, get things while they're cheap, make hay while the sun shines. I think that's really the big thing about this week. And yes, the Mars Saturn conjunction is happening. Yes, there is some type of separation or change or move on from something or outcasting from something. But, you know, that's what I love about astrology is we can both look at the cycles of the good things and the cycles of the bad things without necessarily them ruining each other because both things are true, right? So at the same time, while I'm not saying this is a bad week, this is a serious week. Like, fucking dead ass, not a, not a joke, not a game, but, and I would also say it's a high risk week, but high risks get high rewards. And this is a high reward week. And I think if you take this moment seriously and you really apply things, there is a, tr there's truly a greater light at the end of the tunnel here. You just have to be like, you know, think about running a marathon. Those last few miles of running a marathon are probably the hardest. That's where we're at right now. These are the last few miles this week. Do not give up now. Do not lose that hope now. Just remain focused on what the goal is. Get yourself to the other side. And I think by the time you're at this next horoscope next week, we're at a completely different perspective and world. So I'm gonna leave you guys off with that. Thank you so much for being here, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I truly love and appreciate every single one of you and I'll be seeing you next week.